Now that you've found UBN Radio and discovered our quality talk shows, it's time to spread the word to friends, family, and the universe. 24 hours of music and talk. Radio without limits. That's why people keep coming back for more. That's UBNRadio.com. Jump off that exhausting hamster wheel and into balanced living with Dr. Marissa. Promise you joy in the mystery. Dr. Marissa, also known as the Asian Oprah. Her mission, to be a beneficial presence on the planet. Her purpose, to be your personal advocate to live, laugh, love, learn. Her life motto, don't die wondering. Take back your life with Dr. Marissa Pay. And welcome. You are tuned in to my weekly talk radio show called Take My Advice. I'm not using it. Get balanced with Dr. Marissa every Tuesday at naturally high noon here out of the Sunset Gower Studios in Hollywood, California on Universal Broadcasting Network. And then every Thursday and Saturday on my syndicated CNBC News Radio channel, KCAA AM 1050, FM 106.5, and then now bumped up to iHeartRadio anytime. And this is a show about hope and happiness. So... There's no CNN, constantly negative news, and no gossip, scandal, or K-words. No Kardashian talk at all. I don't care how much I look like Kris Jenner with my sunglasses on. I don't care. We're not talking about that because I want you to focus on your own reality show and how you can be happy 88% of the time. Rest is for contrast. So I have guests and topics to affirm that. And if you've missed any of them, Dr. Michael Bernard Beckwith, Neil Donald Walsh, uh, Marianne Williamson, Marianne from Gilligan's Island, Rick O'Berry, Greg O'Brien, you name it. I've had them here so that you can be happier 88% of the time. And it is that time of the month. It's Marvin Gaye time. Yes, sexual healing I started this particular series two years ago. You might have remembered when I had Dr. Pat Allen on, who rakes me through the romance coals every time she comes on on Valentine's. And I decided at that point that it was so fun to talk about romance and love and sex and combined with the fact that I heard the statistic that up to 80% of women fake orgasms because they don't either feel good about themselves and want to get it over with whatever the reason I knew there was an issue so I love to put the moose on the table Canadian version of elephant in the room and start talking about this topic that is so tied to hope and happiness and there ergo we have our series and if you missed any of the 11 ways to have an orgasm with Davy Tantra Ward um, if you missed the men's panel talking about what they like in the bedroom, to uh, better sex with latex, condom research, to cuddling, to uh, uh, er eradicating female genital uh, mutilation in Sierra Leone, just the whole host of topics. And this is the first time I am actually uh, talking about uh, the LGBT community, uh, Q community, and the uh, what has happened in Orlando, I wanted to bring on the experts. And so I looked around and I found my fellow UBN host, who is the host of the Left of Straight show, who was actually a fellow winner. We both were in the top 10 podcast of the year awards list, Yahoo, for 2016. So I wanted to bring him on and his friend, who is Scott Turner Schofield, and I'll explain a little about his background. He's the first transgender actor. He's actually cast on The Bold and Beautiful. And a little bit more about him, he's an award-winning actor and diversity speaker. He's performed all over the U.S. and abroad with multiple one-man performance productions like Becoming a Man in 127 Easy Steps, yes, another sarcasm is another service I offer partner here, and received multiple awards, including the Tanny Award for Artistic Excellence, given to performers who passionately make a difference in this country through their performing. His latest achievement is as, as I mentioned, the first transgender actor in daytime television playing Nick on CBS's 
the bold and the beautiful. His purpose in life is to aspire, inspire Hollywood, your school, your job, and your family to embrace transgender people. And then Scott Fullerton, who is joining us on uh, Skype, I believe, is the host of the popular talk show Left to Straight, was um, one of the top 10 award winners, as I mentioned. He was originally from California and now is an active supporter and advocate in Ohio. So please welcome to my studio, two Scots. <laughs> Yay. 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 Yay! Thank you. Yay. Yeah, thanks so much for having me. Absolutely. Thanks so much for finding me here and and, and agreeing to come. So we 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 have we never have enough time here on the show. So I'm going to start with uh, what I usually do with my guests. Take me back. You were born as a, a girl, right? Right. And then what happened? <laughs> very quickly yes very quickly yes i was aware that something was awry okay um uh, i mean f as young as i remember being aware right i was like you know and there's this whole story about it's kind of a long story i won't get into it but uh, i was convinced that my grandmother had cut off my penis in the hospital mm. because my family wanted me to be a girl uh. um and that must have been what happened to like my child wow. mind mm -hmm. um mm -hmm. and uh, at about age 11 um a, my best friend sat me down and he said uh, if you don't start acting like a girl i'm not going to be able to stop what happens to you in middle school Oh, wow. And I didn't know what he meant, but it sounded terrifying. Mm -hmm. Where was this? So, um, this is actually in Sheffield, England. I have kind of a law. I, I grew up mostly in the south of the United States, and then my mother and stepfather are British, and so okay. there was a long period of time in, in England as okay. well. Um, but uh, so I quickly conformed mm -hmm. and did the girl thing, and like the good actor that I am, did it super well and mm -hmm. ended up on the homecoming court <laughs> and um, going to debutante balls and okay. all, like, r I really did it. Um, yeah. But I, I love that that tagline that you had about sort of don't die wondering. Mm. Uh, there was a point in my life where I just realized, like, what am I doing, you right. know? Um, I was 20 years old when I met another person man who was transgender. I was aware that there were transgender women, but I just didn't think it was possible because there was no representation anywhere right, right. that you could be a transgender man. So I met right. a transgender man and he educated me mm -hmm. and it was amazing. I, mm. you know, I, it was like seeing stars for the first time, right, you know, right, like just like, right. these have always been here and they're amazing and beautiful. And, right, right. right. Um, and so I came out to my family very quickly after that. Mm -hmm. How did they take it? You know, it was it was difficult. I'm mm -hmm. an only child, mm -hmm. and my mother was very invested in the mother daughter relationship. Uh -huh. um, but after about a year of really intense, you know, sort of having these fights that make you go, "Oh, this is why people leave their families or get kicked out by their families." Like this is what happens, oh, okay. right? Um, you know, I'm sorry. You know, thanks, but you know, it's very. Um, it's ah, <laughs> sorry. <laughs> That's a Okay. I have, uh, you'll, you'll appreciate this. I have affirmations come up every hour on my phone and I, I read them to myself. Oh, read it. Let's see I it. Which one do you have? I like that. Okay. Uh, mm. I am a movie star. Oh, nice. So there you go. There you go. All um, right. <laughs> <laughs> but you totally already sense. are. <laughs> so we're just affirming what already is. Keep going. So, keep go well, uh, movies. I'm on television now. I want to go to movies. Okay. Um, okay. And so it is. Thank you. Mm -hmm. um, yeah. And so, um, at one point, my, my stepdad was like, listen, we have a kid who, you know, went to a top college, uh, has a job that pays for itself, like, you know, mm -hmm. hasn't, you know, been in any trouble in mm -hmm. life. Like, we didn't mm -hmm. do a, a bad thing. And if any of your friends, mom, want to give you a hard time, then they're not your friends, mm -hmm. you know, because so, so much. very supportive. Right. Yeah. And, you know, he had to do his own transition. He kept that silent for about a year until it got really bad. But then he just realized, you know, and, and shared that. Mm -hmm. And and I saw the, the YouTube uh, little interview that you and your mom did. Very sweet. Yeah. Very sweet. And she, you know, you tried to, to, to give her credit and she kept saying, well, I wasn't that good at the beginning and I haven't done all that, but I think it's beautiful. And I think that that is like a, a, a good, healthy, balanced, of course, you're not going to go, oh, yes, you know, I want my child to be ridiculed and right. in a population that isn't understood and, and uh, discriminated against. Of course, every mother is not going to want 
to have or their child face that. It's not even about themselves. Right. So you could just see it. But it was beautiful. Thank you. Thank you. And, you know, it's so good because this is what I say is that when a transgender person comes out, mm-hmm. right, and decides to transition in whatever ways that they're going to do that, mm-hmm. we've been living with this knowledge about ourselves for however long it's been. For me, since I was three, right? Mm-hmm. Um, mm-hmm. And, you know, I'm sitting there 20 years old talking to my parents about this right. and I'm expecting them to be on the same page right. as me immediately, right. Right? right? When a transgender person transitions, everyone around them has to transition right. as well. Society is currently transitioning to it, understand yes, and it is transgender people. Yes, it is. And some yes, people are is. having like difficult reactions to that, but it's all part of the transition. Yes, yes. And, I, and you know, I'll have to put the moose on the table about my own transition to, to this whole topic. I... I grew up in Canada in a very small town. Um, you know, there's I, the the most diversity I had was that I think there was one Indian food restaurant, <laughs> and and I was the only Asian, and right. I spoke German because everybody else did, mm-hmm. and so so coming to LA was a little bit of a culture shock because we are better at valuing diversity. We're not perfect, um, and and yet you know, and I actually consult and do valuing diversity Mm -hmm. and i just realized scott fullerton we're not talking (laughs) with you right now i'm so sorry i'm like so like i'm i'm so so into this but i uh, we will get to you in one second (laughs) he's heard it all before scott and i have worked together for a long time scott is such a very good friend and his story is so fascinating that i could just listen to it all day long oh good i love you thank you that's an ally (laughs) (laughs) absolutely and i want to know how you got to left us straight too so we're going to get to that but my daughter oh so so the two movies that really influenced me were uh the imitation game so if you haven't seen it oh yeah please go see that uh and then the other one is uh the danish girl i mean that was just like mind-blowing and my my younger teen is so proud of me for having you on the show. Oh, great. Because, uh, you know, she she teaches me about really embracing all diversity and sort of gender is this uh, sort of the, 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 not the, I wouldn't say that's the newest, but it's certainly the one that society is grappling with right now. And, and I am absolutely blessed by the embracing of gender. Uh, and, and it's great meeting you in person. Well, thanks so yeah, much. Just just finding out about you. So, Scott. Yes, the other Scott. Scott, uh, the other Scott. Um, <laughs> how? Do you, so you're straight, right? No, no, no. Oh, I'm you're left not straight. Of straight. Yes, you're I'm left gay. of straight. Oh, you are. Okay. Yeah. So I, somewhere I read that you were an advocate uh, supporter at, from a straight perspective. I don't know where I read that, but uh, yeah, so, I do my show for both. Uh, the LGBT community and our allies, though, I tried to. I was actually That's the chair, okay. chairman of our Pride Center, and I really tried to bring a lot of our allies into the program because it's just really um, support is so so needed, as Scott can tell you, when you're a little different minority of some kind, just to have any kind of validation among your own peers is great, yeah. but when you also have another community, it's just that much more important. So Absolutely. I've always been a strong advocate of bringing in straight allies. That's great. And and I coined this new thing that just came to me last week is mainstream is overrated. Amen. <laughs> I love that. Very Amen. good. Right? Because everything that we thought was right is not necessarily right. It's not, you know, I'm all, all about yeah, feeling good and the, what is the better feeling thought? So is it better mm, to hate mm. or is it better to love? Is it better to tolerate or is it better to accept? Mm-hmm. Uh-huh. Or embrace. Or, or embrace, which is even... That even, even <laughs> That's why I love the whole concept exactly. of your show, the balance. Life balance is so important for everybody, yes. no matter whether they're right. gay, straight, bisexual, uh, whatever you happen to be. Mm-hmm. Balance is the key to learning how to deal with not over your own circumstances, but helping with others, too, and understanding others. Yeah, yeah. And, and you know, another – so if you're listening and you are – 
not sure or confused or wondering about your sexual orientation. Uh, I think many teens go through this. I know my daughter, you know, we have extensive discussions about this when friends, <laughs> she's a little bit, now when, when uh, her friends come to the door, I'll actually, so are you gay? <laughs> and she's like, <laughs> mom, <laughs> <Mother. laughs> just yeah. ease it off. You know, this is after I used to talk about vaginas at dinner. So so I'm, I'm, I'm trying to just ease out. But, but I do have a provocative question. Um, the, the Facebook has, what, 56 categories of gender now. Fifty yes. New, mm -hmm. new. No. Mm -hmm. so, so I'm going to speak as a mainstream American for a second. Are we taking this thing way too far? And please, can we, like, uh, you know, same thing with race. You know, how many categories of race and, and, and be, are we taking the the special or the the not mainstream way too far so scott if i can jump in real quick with this i have yeah please do um here's the thing about labels whatever your labels yeah. are right yeah. labels are super important when in kind of a developmental moment of your process with that part of your identity whether you're someone who figures out that you have a mental illness, whether you're someone who has a disability, whether you're someone, wh whatever your race is or your ethnicity is, mm -hmm. your religion, right? All of those things. Um, in the early phase of deciding, like, this is what you're, or learning or, or becoming, right? right? Like, this right. is what I am, right? right? Um, having a label gives you a history to look back on, a culture that's always been around, right? Um, a way, like an understanding of like what it, what's the framework that I'm mm -hmm. working within, mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. So that you can then develop your identity as the gay person, you know, Asian person, disabled person, whatever, mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. um, within that framework. And we all have multiple labels, right? Like yes. I'm a transgender person, but I also live with a mental illness. You know mm -hmm. what I mean? Uh, I'm white. I'm like the whitest white guy on the face of the <laughs> earth. Right. <laughs> I'm like, right. Uh -huh. Um, I, uh, I have enough money, mm -hmm. right? Like that's, mm -hmm. that's its mm -hmm. own thing. It's part right? of, so mm -hmm. yep. th these are all different identities. Right. And, um, and like the mental illness one is the newest one to me. And it's the hardest one to talk about because mm. it's like, oh, my gosh, like people are going to know this about me and they're going to there's all this right. stigma. Like, is it worse to be transgender or have this illness? Right. You know what I mean? Like, right. I don't know what. Can right. I ask what it is? I prefer I'm not. Okay. I'm, I'm at the sharing that yeah, much yeah, yeah. phase. Right. Yeah. Yeah. But so we um, we go through with this stuff and we um, we have all these labels that help us understand what we are. Mm -hmm. And then. We get comfortable with that, right? Or we accept it. Right. If we're not totally comfortable, we just accept it. Right. And then we start doing the rest of our lives, mm -hmm. right? So me now, I'm I'm kind of like, yes, I'm transgender. That's a part of me. But I'm, I'm like way more focusing on the being an actor part, mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. Because my dream has always been to... Well, my dream at three years old was, was to be a man when I grew up. Mm. And my dream at five years old was to be a movie star. Mm. So I'm done with the man part and I'm yeah. moving on to the, to the movie right. star. Right, right. So they are important. They mm -hmm. give us a way to connect. Right. They give us a right. way to develop. Um, some and people can be annoying about them. That's what I think is the real question: is why yeah. are people so annoying yeah. <laughs> with their yeah, labels? Like, yes. You yeah. Know? You to the extreme again. The balance parts, uh, Scott. Well, it's funny, Marissa. It's it's very much um, for the LGBT community. It's even more important to talk about the labels um, as gay man growing up. I knew the LGB and T, and as a director of the Pride Center. I very much focused on the L, B, and G, and the transgender was slowly kind of getting to it because it was tough to identify with those in my community. They, we kind of kept ourselves separate. I think Scott knows that we're seeing a big influx now of coming together, but Scott did the most fantastic TED Talk yes. you've ever seen, yes. and he talks about oh, sex, thanks. gender, and sexuality, and speaking of labels, I can kick ass on anyone's Scrabble game from here on out, because <laughs> I know so many terms now, right. but it's so important for the LGBT community, because we didn't really understand those terms if you were L, G, or B. Mm -hmm. Bisexual has its own little set of issues of people thinking they're a fraud, that they're kind of very greedy, want to go both ways. <laughs> uh, the, the G and the L were always very well defined. Uh-huh. Uh -huh. But the transsex, but the transgender, transgender and the bisexual, there's so many terms. And I think it's more helping for our community, even 
than it is for the straight community. Right. So, yeah, it kind of seems silly, LGBTQ, LMNOP, but there really <laughs> are some important differences right. in those yeah. to learn yeah. from. Yeah, and I and I and I appreciate, and you were a great speaker, by the way. I did look at that. Thank TED you so talk, much. And it's not easy to do those talks. Mm. So, the grounding in identity, which is a birthright that we have as human beings, only applies to humans, is important to understand what your group affiliation is for historical and also for some identity. I think where we get in uh, one pickle at least is when we judge the difference. It, why can't we just say it's different without a value judgment on the difference? And this is where we get into so much trouble, as Americans especially, because you know we'll walk by a microwave and we'll smell something a little different and we'll say, mm, like, uh, uh, I wish people would just, you know, right. smell buy a food. sandwich, yeah. you know, since mm -hmm. when, you know, why do we, and, and so there's this negative, worse than, you know, difference mm -hmm. equals less than. Right. Right. I'm not advocating, again, the balance, going by and going, oh, yay, I want to try that. You know, no. But <laughs> can we replace disgust with curiosity? Can we mm. replace, you know, the, the, the exclusion with inclusion? So, so that, I think, we're learning painfully now as Americans. And what I see in the, in the social media, I love this one interview somebody did, uh, where they interviewed everyone and said, when did you decide to be straight? Right. <laughs> and I went, wow, that's a really good question. We don't decide that we're straight. Then why would we ask someone who's gay, when did you decide that or, or know that you were, you know, that, right. that there's, there's an inequality in that. And then at the same time, I think that we do take it too far because then we only we stereotype based on that group difference. So all transgenders are, all gays are, all white people are, all Asians can't drive. All, you know, all right. that, all the, the, you know, because we want to have a separate identity that is not part of the group. So the melting pot doesn't work. I call it the stew. If you're a carrot <laughs> and I'm a potato and you're meat, <laughs> sorry. <laughs> Meat. You know, go. you're you're good meat, and then there's some bad meat, and there's there's some good meat. Well, my kids are vegan, so I can't really say that. So my, you know, but then together we have gravy, together, and we need all of us right. to make the gravy, and that's the glue that sticks us together. I think it's a little bit to do with ego. Mm. Right? right. Your ego is the part of you that's saying, like, I'm the best in the room. Also, your ego is the part of you that's saying, I'm the worst in the room. That's the critic. Right. Yeah. yeah. And let go of my ego. Right. Right. I would let go of my <laughs> ego. Yeah, totally. <laughs> right. And so, uh, you know, identifying as transgender meant that I, you know, there can be harm with identifying with it with the term because I can look at that and go, wow, I'm 12 times more likely to be murdered. I'm two to four times more likely to be unemployed. Mm. You know what I mean? I've got all of this. I'm 40% of us attempt suicide, mm. right? Like, mm. so that's like kind of a lot of negativity yes. to live with. Yes. Right. Um, and that's something I've had to kind of really dissociate myself with and say, okay, yes, all those things are true. And those are things that I have to take care of my community around. Um, but... I'm not going to, that's not me mm -hmm. individually, right? Mm -hmm. Now, on the other side, my my arrogant ego, right, can go, so so my unworthiness ego can go to all of those places. Yeah. And my arrogant ego can go, those gays, man, they're just, they're just like the worst. You know, mm -hmm. they're so privileged and full of themselves and blah, blah, blah. Or, or those heterosexual people, they're the worst, blah, 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 blah. Mm -hmm. Making myself better. Right, right, right. And so anytime I'm like in that space where I'm either feeling unworthy or totally better than anybody else i go yeah. oh wait that's the signal that my ego is at work yeah yeah right. i call that the swing from i think i'm hot shiitake to i think i'm a piece of shiitake <laughs> you know that. and it's I hot shiitake that. piece of shiitake yeah. it's, right. a, yeah. it's exhausting yeah exhausting it really is yeah and That's, i think that we're we're just dealing with think with that you know yeah think about all the people who don't deal with their egos who yeah. don't aren't even conscious that they have one yeah Right. Yeah. yeah. Very good point. You know, we're just I, I look at everything now as a transition. Mm -hmm. You know, I've mm -hmm. completed perhaps one of the deepest transitions a human can go through. Yes. Right. Did you take now? Can I ask about how, what transitions you've gone through? Um, I've done surgery and hormones. OK. Right. And all my legal stuff. And, you know, so like every part of me except my birth certificate, because I'm born in Texas where they say the chromosomes uh, uh, determine your sex, which means that in North Carolina, I have to use the women's room. 
Doesn't that freak you out? <laughs> <laughs> like, and the, you know these are so the, these crazy. are the things, right? And this is all political. It's got nothing, and it's about the ego. It's about society's right. ego saying we're going to make you less than mm -hmm. because we want to feel better than, mm -hmm. right? And you hit that right on the head. Actually, I saw that one clip on the Bold and the Beautiful where you say, "Go ahead and fire me, and I'll come right back at you for discrimination." The good news about our laws is we do have equal opportunity. You know the the EO laws. Thank God for that. Truly, right? mm -hmm. that we're working. And and I went and looked up some statistics. Uh, in 2012, 3.8 percent of Americans identified as gay, lesbian, bisexual, transgender. 1.7 as lesbian. 1.8 as bi. And only 0.3 percent as transgender. And then you know the ego goes, oh well, there's not that many, right? But they, if you look at the actual number, it was 700,000. So 700,000 is a big number. Now, according to uh, analysis, we're double that. And so, uh, or more, or right. more is what, is what I really think. So we're one point, where is it? 1.4 million adults in the U.S. identify as transgender. I did a, a diversity workshop for um, UPS. And um, I was trying to think, like, how can I make this relevant to them? Mm -hmm. And then mm -hmm. I thought about it. And I was like, oh, that's so interesting. Transgender people, we generally, like, we don't like to go out to buy our clothes, so we buy them online. A lot of us don't live close enough to the kind of pharmacies that have the things we have, so we get it online. And I started, you know, a lot of us don't live next near bookstores that have the books that tell us our history, so we buy it online. We're buying mm -hmm. all this stuff online. And I did the math according to those percentages. Yeah. And I found out that it was $16.8 million a year. Um, generated by by just community. transgender yeah. people, which in the yeah. UPS grand scheme of things, like isn't that much, right, right, right. but it's still sixteen point eight yeah. billion a million dollars, yeah. right? Yeah, like, and I love UPS. I actually spoke for them too, but that's the name of my higher power. I call him Universal Power Source. I love it. And he <laughs> oh, he's my great. UPS man. He delivers every morning when I pray and meditate. Amen. So Scott, you were going to say something. Scuffling. Well, yeah, you you brought up Pulse a while back when you were thinking, and mm -hmm. there's there's different things that we have to understand that other people don't. Like when the first thing that go through my head when I'm seeing Pulse, along with the shock on tragedy of it, is um, how many of those people there, family knows are there. There's some people. There's such the stigma still surrounding being gay that who knows are there. And then when it goes to claim the bodies, there was actually one person there. Mm -hmm that didn't want to claim their sons or daughter's body because they disowned them for being gay. So there's wow. a whole bunch of different sets I don't even think about. Mm -hmm. um, gay is not something you see on your skin color or on your features or anything it happens to be. So there's this whole subset of issues that you have that is really kind of interesting when, when you think about it. And right. it's, just, mm -hmm. it's really, really crazy. Yeah, it mm -hmm. is. So, so let's talk about Orlando. When you, like what... So, so the first reaction obviously is shock and any kind of shooting, and then to find out that it was a targeted shooting, right? Because of that, right. mm -hmm. uh, because of who you are, um, is is there any hope <laughs> for us? Yes. <laughs> Yes, that is a hundred percent. Go ahead, Scott. <laughs> no, you go ahead, Scott. <laughs> well, I mean, we were talking about I, what I cope with talking about, and I think it's, it's very good. Um, I know Scott had real issues with it. Scott kind of had to shut down because of everything for a while. Um, him and I are very good social media friends. I was the opposite way. When it happened, I was supposed to go to Pittsburgh that day. It was Pittsburgh's Pride that afternoon. It was also LA's Pride that same Sunday that it happened. But I was, I'm an hour here from Pittsburgh, and I was scheduled to go there, but I just couldn't process it enough that I needed to be with other people. And my thought process being a radio host, and you might feel the same way, Marissa, mm -hmm. is I know that there's a certain amount of our segment of our LGBTQ community that may not be able to talk to anyone about this. They're either mm -hmm. too young, they haven't come out yet. Mm -hmm. So it was more important for me to have a radio conversation about it. And I did an impromptu show that Sunday. Call. I had some great friends from L.A. and from Santa Barbara and from uh, Santa Cruz and from Missouri call into the show. And we actually talked about our feelings. And that helped me through it. Mm -hmm. um, I, I'm very much a, a talk person, a verbal person. When I can talk through something, I can get through something. Mm -hmm. And I was so fortunate to be a radio host that day that I was able to actually bring a forum to it where hopefully some kid in the middle of nowhere that doesn't really have that much LGBT representation presentation can get on his internet and find something that will kind of give him some commonality in it. Right. So that's what helped right. me through it. Right. And and I think it's important for us, Scott, in the media who 
aren't the mainstream media who have ways of talking, we can either do what everybody else does, which is, you know, focus on the hate, focus on what's wrong, focus on the blood, focus on, uh, you know, if it bleeds, it leads, uh, focus on what's wrong with us and what's wrong, you know, it's it's our job to balance that out. And the reality is there were good things that happened, even in the reporting of it, uh, not talking about the name of the shooter uh, instead uh, and not just naming the names of the people who who uh, who transitioned, but talking about a little bit about them. So we felt more so many good things. You had the long lines of people willing to give blood, which was amazing. Mm-hmm. Uh, and, and it happens in all communities. When you think about to the church shooting and all of the uh, fellow church parishioners just giving so much love to the shooters right. and that happened, mm-hmm. uh, right. shooter that happened. Right. I mean, that's the way you need to look at, I think, to heal. You have to come at it yes. from the perspective of the love. So I think you're 100 percent right on that. Yeah. Now, it's not to say that you don't process the grief and I'm, I'm sure. guessing that w- one of the hard things for people who are in that community is it brings back all of the personal feelings that c- came with being ridiculed and ostracized and discriminated against and hurt which are real feelings and now you have someone not just using the 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 bullets from their words but using literal bullets to kill based on that identification. Right. And in a place, you know, gay bars have historically been a safe space for LGBT people. It's the mm-hmm. place where you can go, where people understand you. Everybody knows your name, mm-hmm. like aside from the drama <laughs> with, with, your, with your peeps, <laughs> right? Like it's, it's, it's a safe space. Uh-huh. And for that to have happened and to have been a target. And also, by the way, to be the biggest mass shooting in United right. States history, like yeah. not only just another one, but like the right, biggest. Right, right, right. I remember. Um, yeah, yeah, just, just it was, it was tragic, yeah. and I mean to say the least. Um, and to me, you know, I, I work for a suicide hotline for transgender people. It's by and for transgender people. So you call somebody and you know that they're going to get you. You know, when you that's when you get fabulous. On the yeah, it's called Trans Lifeline. They're amazing. Trans Lifeline. Mm-hmm. How do they? How do they? Uh, is there a number you can put out there right now? Uh, you can get it. Yeah, there it is right there. TransLifeline. Perfect. Thank you, Jarvis. And yeah, thanks, Jarvis. Yeah, great. And, um, you know, I just got on, on the phone, just made my phone line open and just talked to people. Again, I guess it was kind of a, a talking to people thing, mm-hmm. you know. Mm-hmm. Um, and there's something about tragedies. I don't know if this is this is something that just is my way of processing. Mm-hmm. Like I remember when 9-11 happened, too. I just I go to my higher self somehow. It's mm-hmm. like so awful that I just go up mm-hmm. and I'm just like, OK, what what is the love what can we learn from this? Mm-hmm. What is, ha- you know, what are the comforting things that can be said in this moment? Mm-hmm. Like, and it's That's all why I like there you. for me. <laughs> I, I'm grateful for it because I don't, I don't do that in my mind. Yeah. You know what I mean? Like that yeah. just is like where yeah. I go because I can't handle it, yeah. you know, otherwise. Yeah. I've been taught that in a tragedy, all of our hearts are broken wide open for more love, for more compassion. And that is uh, one of the, the the best ways to to sort of react to tragedy instead of what we're constantly told to do, which is to sit in front of the TV waiting for sp- people to talk who don't know or speculate about things that they don't know and try to second guess everything and then they lose all that time sitting in front of the tv for what to know that someone's horrible or to know what is wrong and it's my show so then <laughs> <laughs> and speaking of which it's time to go to break and thank all of those who make this show possible our sponsors thank you so much and we'll be back in two and two peace in and peace out How do you prepare a young teen for the sexual culture they're growing up in today? Science teacher Dave Beck's hilarious and harrowing book, They Ask You What?, does just that. It gives the student, their parents and teachers the knowledge and tools to deal with the reality of today's overwhelmingly sexual American culture. And it's a great, fun, thoughtful read. Read it yourself. Give it to your teen and or their teachers. Available for Kindle download and soft cover purchase at Amazon.com. And we are back. You are tuned into my weekly talk radio show called Take My Advice. I'm not using it. Get balanced with Dr. Marissa. And we are on the last week of the month. So it is sexual healing with 
me and my special guest today, Scott Fullerton, host of Left of Straight show here on Universal Broadcasting Network. And my very special guest, Scott Turner Schofield, <laughs> who is uh, a, a, just a fabulous human being, number one. Uh, he That's is good. the first transgender actor. Uh, he's uh, on The Bold and the Beautiful, which is actually a show I have to admit I watched when I was in college. <laughs> you and everybody, everybody else. else. Right, right. <laughs> right. And it's one of the ones that is still there. And you play Nick. Mm -hmm. And uh, you've done a TED Talk. You've done uh, one-man shows. You have gone through uh, a tremendous transformation yourself. Now you're taking that transformation and uh, helping people understand uh, if they're not comfortable with the sex that they were born with, uh, how to process through that. So for all those reasons and more, I am presenting you with the Dr. Marissa Beneficial Presence on the Planet Award. Oh, thank you. Uh, I'm so grateful. And I don't do that every week. Thank you very much. Yes. I'm, I'm honored. Thank yes. you. Yes, and I do... And I do think that uh, it is time. It's really time for us to uh, embrace diversity. I think that's going to help us on so many levels, gender, race, age, you name it. We need it. And we do not need a president coming in who will put us back another mm. five centuries uh, where we were before and build walls. And so normally I don't talk about politics, but uh, I'm a little concerned with the numbers he's getting. And so I have mm. taken to the air to talk about valuing diversity. And uh, so I would just ask you, is the person that you're voting for valuing diversity? And uh, I do know um, that Donald Trump is not. Uh, and I do understand if you have strong feelings about Hillary I kind of have to vote for her because she gave me uh, the 2005 uh, <laughs> uh, Role Model of the Year Award. No, I'm kidding. Uh, but she is a woman who has leadership skills, and I know there's a lot of people who uh, have some question about her. But I, I just, in, in, in contrast to what uh, Donald represents, I definitely want to uh, put the vote out there for Hillary. And... Um, what can we do? What can we do as a society? What can what can uh, a, a straight, Asian, good driver, uh, <laughs> a, a woman do to support this whole effort? That question goes to both of you, Scott. Well, Scott, I think you're. I want to model Scott here a little bit because um, he's a great ally, right? So he he's running this center, and he realizes that there aren't any transgender people, and and he, and he's running this radio show, right? And there's no voice, there's no representation happening. So what he does instead of sitting there and going, "Well, I can't find any," or "Well, I mean, they know we're here, and they could come to us," mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. He goes out and he asks among his friends and among his you know out in his community, and he goes out and. And seeks these voices that he's looking for mm -hmm. because the thing about being marginalized is it's actually like really difficult for a marginalized person to think that they're good enough and yes that's the negative ego right but to yeah. think that they are Piece worthy enough mm -hmm. right to go to to you know for me to come to you and to say Dr. Marissa, can I be on your show? Mm -hmm. Right. It, like that's a huge leap for me. Right. But yeah. for you to say, I value your voice and I want to know more about it. Please come, you know, going out, doing the research yourself. Mm -hmm. Right. Being purposeful around the like, reach. Exactly. Mm -hmm. And and I think an, a kind of a don't. So that's a do. Mm -hmm. And a don't is, you know, one of the things that's happening, particularly politically right now on, on my Facebook feed. Right. <laughs> is a lot of people telling me how I should feel and think. Right. Uh, Which is different from having an opinion. Right. Having an opinion is to say, I think this. I right. think Donald Trump could be the worst thing that's ever happened to the entire world. Yeah. Period. Uh -huh. Right. Uh -huh. <laughs> right. Um, I do. That's an opinion. I do. <laughs> right. <laughs> that's an opinion. You're not saying all of you who support Donald Trump are idiots and you should not vote for him. Mm -hmm. And if you do, blah, 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 right. Like right. that's a totally different tack to take on it. And yeah. so I don't understand why otherwise well-meaning people uh -huh. want to come to me and tell me that I shouldn't feel sad about pulse. You know, that like, look, it's a, it's a gun tragedy, but like we need to teach gun responsibility and da 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 da. Right. Like right. you shouldn't feel so bad. Right. 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 Everybody mean, has a right to your opinion. Right. Or don't, yeah. don't like stop whining about these bathrooms all the time. Look, just use the bathroom that you're supposed to use. 
Mm -hmm. you know, Mm -hmm. right? So Mm -hmm. don't go to someone and tell them how they should and shouldn't feel. Like everybody gets to have their opinions Mm -hmm. and their Mm -hmm. feelings, Mm -hmm. you know? And inclusivity means allowing for that. Yeah, yeah. And and just to, to anchor that on the other end, I get to do diversity consulting with an older generation. And a lot of uh, very deeply rooted, this is the way it is. And the, the perception that if I open the door to value a little bit of diversity, all havoc will break loose. Because right. now I have to ask everybody, what would you like to be called? What would you like to be called? What would you like to be called? What's the term I should use here? What is it? And then I lose all control and there's no, you know, the, the, I, I don't, I just don't know. And that comes from a place of, I want to know the rules so I can be right. It has nothing to do mm-hmm. with the value of diversity. And just given the fact, if I'm in a room and someone asks um, what what's everybody's preferred gender pronoun, for mm-hmm. instance, which is another ally move, you're at a meeting, just so you know that you're not, call- I'm not calling you he when you're meant to be called she. Right. Right. Uh-huh. When that's how you want to be called. Uh-huh. Even if that person then messes everybody's up, <laughs> right? They asked. They showed me that they have an awareness mm-hmm. that it's important mm-hmm. to respect people's pronouns. Yes. Right. Yeah. yeah. It's yeah. very important. I mean, I have my, my brother lives in South Carolina in the South. And all the time, whenever I go down to visit, it's like, just the things that you're ingrained like that's so gay it's like oh sorry bro sorry about that it's like there's just so many things that you can do just Mm -hmm. to kind of acknowledge it and i we can joke about ourselves as much as anybody else can yeah it's just like scott said it's the acknowledgement of the understanding that hey there's another point of view out there i respect i respect you for it yeah but i'm i i need to I'm going to speak my mind too, and I, I'm doing it out of respect. And you can really tell that when it's coming from respect or when it's coming from a place of negativity. Right. Uh, or, it's, it's just crazy. And the age – you talk about the age gender. Um, we have talked about that so much that the younger, younger generation now is really becoming a lot more open. They're also – the ones that are a little more rambunctious, the ones that aren't as open. But it's like you're get, you're finding so many people nowadays that really have that compassion. Mm-hmm. And they're, they're willing to understand. It. And you find even the LGBT bars are, are empty now of the younger people because they're all going to the straight bars to, with all their friends because it's a lot more inclusive now, which is really nice. Mm-hmm. So it's, it's, it's a whole generational thing, Marissa, that I think is really starting to change. And wouldn't be great the day that we don't really, that's not one of the first things we ask, or are you gay, yes. or are you a boy, or you a girl, whatever. It's right, just right. You just, you're just you. And, you know, there's, a, there's something else, too. The people that aren't fans of this transition that our society is making because yes. our, our kids are growing up, they're yeah. so much more empathic. And, totally. And into justice and fairness, yes. right? Like, I love, I love what's happening to our yeah. country, right? Mm-hmm. Um, but people are grumpily talking about PC, political correctness. Yes. Right. I don't want to learn all of your labels because that's just PC nonsense. And yeah. Da, da, da. yeah. And I flipped PC instead of talking about it as um, political correctness. Mm-hmm. I talk about it as personal consciousness. Hmm. So like that personal conscious, that. steal it, steal away. And here's what I mean by that. <laughs> yeah. Feel free to spread it. Um, personal consciousness is looking at you and going, you are a person. I am conscious that you are a person just like I am, that you have wants and needs mm-hmm. and opinions just like I do. And as a person, I am conscious that you deserve respect. Mm-hmm. I'm also conscious that myself as a person, uh, the way I think the way that I, as a white guy, Mm-hmm. Right. As a mm-hmm. transgender guy, as you know what I mean, as a guy mm-hmm. who has enough money. Right. right see the world is not necessary. I'm conscious of the fact that that is not necessarily how the world actually works right. for everybody. Right. I am conscious mm-hmm. of this. Mm-hmm. Right? I like that. I like that. But political correctness to me is that rule driven. I only want to know the right to, to uh, term because I don't want to be right. I'm sorry. I don't want to be wrong. Right. Personal consciousness is I want to be respectful that is my i exactly. want to be i want to be remembered as a respectful human being and most everybody would say do you want to be remembered as res-? yes then why is it such a big freaking deal to use different terms that change over time interchangeably with people it's not that big of a deal and yet it's that it's that don't tell me what to do or 
I don't want to be wrong. And I meant it respectfully. So the fact that you didn't take it respectfully <laughs> is not my problem. I meant it respectfully. So I call that intent and impact. If yeah. your intent is to be respectful, then isn't it important that your impact is also respectful mm -hmm. so we're on the same page singing the same choir here we go so nice <laughs> to have met you this is so great what did i expect from somebody that scott you know asked me to come talk to it's so great that's <laughs> great that's great and well, it, it's just such a pleasure to be on your show i mean i've i've, uh, I've been so honored to listen to your show uh so honored to be nominated as a top 10 podcast in the health field you so deservedly so dr Marissa. thank you and, and thanks you and for LGBT. everything that you're doing it's just fantastic oh thank you too love you both very much <laughs> we are at the end any last words for my audience who has been educated and inspired uh by the sexual healing that uh is is going on right now well i mean if we're talking about sexual healing and balance you know, it's so simple. It's that whole love yourself piece, mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. This world is so negative, mm -hmm. right? And we are so negative to ourselves mm -hmm. about sex, about love, about all of, you know, about who we are, any mm -hmm. of it. Mm -hmm. And the thing that I, you know, people call me brave because I'm, you know, transgender and I've transitioned and I'm like doing this out about it, right? Mm -hmm. I'm like, I just literally decided to love myself more than I hated myself, <laughs> you know, so love it, it. Love yourself more than you hate yourself. Love it. I love your eighty-eight mm. percent. Yeah, exactly. And yeah. Scott said it earlier. Just ask. We, it's it's so enheartening when someone just to ask about yourself. It, it validates yourself as a person. It's like if you don't understand something. It's like I don't really understand how you can do such and such. Just the fact that you're taking the time to want to know about my life and to inquire about it. That's mm. that's uh, almost that's all the way there almost right there so mm -hmm. i love it absolutely wonderful love yourself more than you hate yourself I, I that that's the parting words here thank you so much very much scott turner showfield tune in to him on the bold and beautiful as nick and tune in to left of straight it's a great show hosted by the fabulous Scott Fullerton Top 10 Podcast of the Year Award 2016 in the LGBT category. When are you on? I am on every Monday and Tuesday from 2 p.m. Pacific time to 4 p.m. Pacific time. Perfect. And then how can we like you, Facebook? You can find me at Turner Schofield, uh, S-C-H-O-F-I-E-L-D, um, at Turner Schofield on all of the ways. <laughs> yeah, just go to the leftofstraight.com. That's L E F T O F S T R and the number eight dot com. Everything's right there. Wonderful. And you know, eight is a lucky number in Chinese, it's a homonym for good fortune. So that's oh, why okay. I use 88%. And that's why I picked your show because it was left of straight eight. <laughs> that is awesome. Thank you. Beautiful. Thank right. you so much. Thank you. And. It is that time of the hour when we ask you to step up to the balance bar and... Uh We didn't get the promo quite on, but all of you know that I do have a new app to help with the negativity that Scott was talking about that's in our society. It's the 21 Day Fast from Complaining with Dr. Marissa app. And so 21 days of balanced tips, a little video, and then cheers when you don't complain for the day. It keeps a log of how many times you do. You get a, a crying kid when you do complain. So please go to Google Play or Apple Store. You can put No Complaints 21 Day Fast or Dr. Marissa Pay and pick that up for 99 cents. Who says you can't get anything for a buck these days? I've been running this good life habit now for six years. So round 62 uh, starts August 1st. And uh, please do uh, sign up at my website, the number four, balance.org. Use the guest register because when you do register... You will be entered, if you cannot complain for 21 days in a row, you will win a free pack of my motivational cards called 52 Card Pick-Me-Up, Stacking the Deck for Life Balance with Dr. Merson. As always, everything in my balance marketplace goes towards my peace work around the planet. So thank you very much for the support. Next week, my special guest will be Millie Hubbard of Foot Karma. 
With leather high heel sole insoles and orthotics, learn how to be comfortable in your own shoes. That's next week on Take My Advice. I'm not using it. Get balanced with Dr. Marissa Pay. That's P for positive, E-I. And remember, it is all about balance. Peace in and peace out. on the outside.